Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Brooke and you look lovely today. So today we're doing a book haul. My goal is to actually tell you what each of these books is about, at least a little bit. So a couple weeks ago, Barnes & Noble had their book haul blowout sale where they had a ton of titles for 50% off. So I had to stop in and buy me some stuff because otherwise, uh, who am I? really. I'm also including a couple of other books I bought from Barnes & Noble this month just so I can have them in a video and also because this is probably going to be my last book haul for a while because I'm attempting to go on a book buying ban at least for a couple months. This month I'm only allowing myself to buy one book which is The Testaments by Margaret Atwood which is the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale because I can't not but your girl really needs to save some money because she needs to pay down her student loans before the middle of November as much as possible. So we're trying to lay off the books. I got a lot to read anyway and the library's there. So let's get started. The first two books I'm going to show you I've already talked about on my channel. They are Once in Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy and Sky Without Stars by Jessica Brody and Joanne Rendell. I bought these because I read them as ARCs and I enjoyed both of them and so I wanted finished copies and so I was like while they're 50% off your girl's gonna grab them. This one is a gender bent King Arthur retelling in space. This one is a Les Mis retelling, also in space. Next, I picked up Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer, which is the second book in her new series that I have not actually started. I do own Renegades, haven't gotten to it yet, but as I've said many times in many past videos, Marissa Meyer is my queen. I love her, so I needed it. Also, fun story, around Christmas time, I had a bunch of books stolen out of my car. I don't think I've talked about this in another video. It was about like $300 worth of books with my employee discount. It was very devastating. I ended up getting a lot of them back because some of the receipts were still in the bags and the people who stole them tried to return them to the store at which I worked. So that was a fun situation. And since then I've re-boughten, boughten is a word, but whatever, re a lot of them. And this was the last book that I had had stolen from me that I had not repurchased, so I'm happy to have it again. Then there were two more YA books that I decided to pick up while they were on sale. The first one is Voices by David Elliott, which is kind of a biography but fictionalized of Joan of Arc that is told in verse, and as y'all know, I'm all about the verse. The next one is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pau Preto. Sorry if I said that wrong. This one I've been seeing a lot about on Twitter. A lot of people have said it was really good. I was kind of like not super interested in it, but since I saw it was on the sale, I was like, let me actually, uh -huh, you know, read the synopsis because the synopsis is like always what gets me in books. So I know a lot of people are like cover people or like hype people, but I'm very much a summary person. Like if it sounds good, I'm for it. It's mine. Put it in my hand. From what I can tell, this is a fantasy in which people ride giant phoenixes. It's also about two sisters and their feud and there's also like a dual timeline I think with another set of sisters who are like queens or royalty or some aspect. I'm actually thinking that this might go on my novel inspiration list if I really like it. Next I have a couple of middle grades. The first one is Sal and Gabby Break the Universe by Carlos Hernandez. This is a Rick Riordan Presents book and I am going to give each series under this imprint at least a chance. I'm sure I'm gonna love them but you never know. You can't love everything. This one is based on Cuban mythology or folklore because if you know anything about the imprint, Rick Riordan is choosing authors who also write about mythologies from their own cultures. And this one, from what I can gather, Sal has some sort of magic power and him and Gabby have to team up to not destroy the universe. Next I have Willa of the Wood by Robert Beattie, which I've had my eye on for a while because I don't know if I've mentioned this before, I might have, but when I was younger my favorite books were always about fairies and dragons. Those were like the epitome of all fantasy. And so I still really like the feelings that like cute fairy tale witchy dragon writing kind of middle grade books give me and so I've had my eye on this. This one is about Willa who's like a little fairy and she's a night fairy and she calls humans day folk and she basically kind of sneaks into their houses and steals things I think and then there's some sort of plot where she has to interact with day people and question her assumptions or something like that. And then I bought a couple of adult books because your girl is getting older and some of those are starting to appeal to her. Shock. The first one is Women Talking by Miriam Taos. This book is about Mennonite women who think that they are being accosted by demons at night but then find out 
that the men in their colony are actually drugging and raping them while they sleep. This is based on a real event that happened to a Mennonite colony in Bolivia. The next one is Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James. I've heard a ton of great things about this. This is an African-based fantasy, which is really all I need to hear. But honestly, I've skimmed it. The writing looks like it's going to be beautiful. Also, the paper in this book is a really weird textured, and I think it's because they tried to make it real thin so it wouldn't be real thick, even though it's like 600 pages. Then I picked up a couple of nonfiction books. The first one is an essay collection called What My Mother and I Don't Talk About. 15 Writers Break the Silence, edited by Michelle Fieldgate. This sounds really interesting to me. I think the essays cover a broad range of topics, but they all go back to the essay writer's relationship with their mom. Then I have the library book by Susan Orlean. This is sort of a journalistic book that follows the case of the Los Angeles Public Library fire that happened about 30 years ago and was never solved. She explores that and she also explores what libraries mean in our society and what roles they play. And since I now work at a library and I'm actually considering being a career librarian, I thought this would be a good one for me to pick up. Then I finally picked up Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I have loved John Green since I was a teenager, but it's been a long time since I've read one of his books. I think because The Fault in Our Stars came out in like 2012, and I read that then, and then this came out like last year or something, and I haven't read it yet. This is about Aza, who has anxiety and OCD, and it's kind of, I think, some kind of detective mystery story, and so it's her dealing with her mental health problems while she is trying to figure this other stuff out and I believe it is own voices based on John Green's own OCD and anxiety. This one was on the table at my Barnes & Noble in hardback but I think it was only supposed to be on there in paperback because it did not ring up as 50% off which I did not notice until I got home so I might be about to go back to the Barnes & Noble and see if we can do something about that. Then while I was at Barnes & Noble I picked up Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Burton. This book was not part of the sale, but it was 20% off, and my membership made it 30% off, and then I had a coupon for 15% off one book, so I decided to get this one. This one, it is basically like the zombie apocalypse happens, but it's told from the perspective of people's pets, and mostly this one pet crow, and it's just like real absurd and raunchy and like girls about it. On the back it says The Walking Dead meets The Secret Life of Pets and I'm already into that but I'm also just into weird funny shit. <laughs> like, like all those like bad spoof zombie movies I'm down for it and so I'm hoping I'm really gonna like this one. And then while I was there I also went ahead and picked up this book I ordered which is Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. This was first recommended to me by my Native American literature professor when I was in college and since then I've seen a lot of great stuff about it. Apparently it's like top tier fantasy. I'm not really sure about the plot but I do know that the fantasy land is based on the Navajo reservation as if it like had become its own country and I think magic comes from that. Then for the sale I really wanted to pick up The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. There was only one copy at my store however and it was pretty ripped so I decided to go ahead and order this online which I'm still annoyed because it's still just a little bit ripped, although not near as bad as the other one, and so I'm just gonna suck it up and deal with it. But I've been hearing great things about this. This is like a feminist fantasy. It's a standalone, which is why it's a real big boy, but I think all the main characters are women. It has some queens in it. It has some dragons in it. I think this might also go on my novel inspiration list, and I'm really excited to get to it. Maybe in October after I knock out some other things on my list and I have a big chunk of time. Then, since I was already making that online order, I went ahead and added Jimena and Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff to my order. This is the second and third book in the Illuminate files. I just read Illuminate at the end of August and I'm obsessed. So I can't tell you guys about these obviously because you know it's the middle book and the sequel in a trilogy. I ain't about to like spoil y'all. But Illuminate is a story told in a dossier of documents and it's set in space on some spaceships. People are running away from some bad guys and there's like some zombie-like plague and like artificial intelligence evil supercomputers. And if you're not down for that, um... Then the last three books I picked up from Barnes & Noble this month are all fairy tale compilations. This is both research and inspiration for my writing. The first one is The Tale of Tales 
by Giambattista Basile. This is actually like the very first fairy tale collection that was ever put together that we know of. This man was Italian and it's framed as these people like all telling stories to each other. It might be a contest, kind of similar to the Decameron if you've ever studied that. I did as an English major. I was interested in this collection specifically because it has Sun, Moon, and Talia in it, which is the very first version of Sleeping Beauty that we have on record, and it involves cannibalism, which is what I'm into, and I'm kind of using it as a basis for the backstory of my fantasy land. Then I picked up the original folk and fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm, the complete first edition translated and edited by Jack Zipes. So this was actually the edition of the Grimm Fairy Tales that I used for my honors research. It is a translation of the very, very first edition because the Grimm's, before they even died, put out like 13 editions of these tales. And so who knows what versions we're getting now from Disney and the storybooks and they've been rewritten so many times and I just wanted the originals for reference. Then lastly, I picked up the complete fairy tales and stories of Hans Christian Andersen translated from the Danish by Eric Christian Haugard. I really wanted a complete, complete collection of Hans Christian Andersen's stories because he published them throughout his life because unlike a lot of other fairy tale collectors, he actually wrote all his. They were his original ideas and stories. And because he made a career out of it, it's very hard to find a complete collection. Also, you have to be careful about good translations, especially because he wrote in Danish and a lot of English people necessarily didn't know Danish, so they relied very heavily on translating from the German, which had been translated from the Danish. So this gentleman, Eric Christian Haugard, went back to the Danish versions and translated them for us because he's great like that. Although I think technically there's a few stories missing out of here, but it all depends on what you count, I guess. It had the Little Mermaid in it, which is what I really wanted. <laughs> so those are all the books I bought from Barnes & Noble this month. I'm not really sure how many that was. I should have counted, but I didn't. Let me know if you hit up the Barnes & Noble sale, if you've read any of these books, if you're excited to read any of these books, if you're interested in any of these books, you know. Thanks for watching. I love you. Bye.